the Sal Sertia Show, the mayor of rock and roll. Folks, how are we doing out there? Welcome to show number, is this 16 or 17? Man, I don't, now I'm losing track. I think, Joanne, do you know if this I is think 16, it's 16 or 17? 16, 16. right? 16, yeah. I better start writing it down on paper. I'm trying to memorize it. I better write it down on paper from now on, you know? Yeah. So, uh, how you doing, Joanne? You all right? Yeah, I'm doing pretty good. Thank you, Sal. Yeah. Hanging loose like a long-haired goose? Like a long-haired goose. I love the way you say that. That, go, that always cracks me up. That's funny, Sal. <laughs> Tonight we have an incredible guest. You know, I mean, uh, I've been getting a lot of uh, emails and phone calls and people who are telling me that that's their favorite uh, actor on Oz and in general. You know, you've heard of him, Anthony Chisholm, right? That's right. Well, I just I, we just I love talked on the work. phone with him for. Yeah, we just talked on the phone with him about two, three minutes ago, and uh, did he call in yet? No, not yet. Uh, maybe he had to run to the bathroom, or who knows, maybe him and Michael Wright are uh, eating some spaghetti, and his yeah. mom was there, Michael Wright's mom was there, so it's probably <laughs> just hanging loose. Or maybe he lost yeah, the number, you know? Yeah, probably feeding them right now. He probably lost the number. <laughs> You know, the thing is about Anthony Chisholm is he can remember a whole script of, uh, you give him a script of a movie, and he'll read yeah. it and memorize the whole thing, but sometimes mm-hmm. he'll say, I, yeah, I'll call him up and call me back in five minutes, and he says, did I talk to you, Sal? I say, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we're, we're at that stage these days, even me, you know, I go into a room, and I get into yeah. the room, I say, wait a minute, what did I come in here for? Hey, I, so, I, I've ran up a whole flight of steps and got to the top and don't know why the hell I'm up there. So there you go. Yeah, and I mean, we talked to Chisholm like like literally two minutes ago. <laughs> and I guess... <laughs> I don't mean to laugh, but that's funny. We did. We did. It's we talked to him literally two minutes ago. Two minutes ago, I said, make sure you got the number, make sure you call inside. So I, I, I am almost positive that he had to run to the bathroom. Or you know, sometimes when the, you know yeah. when you gotta go, you gotta go. You know what I'm saying? No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have no idea what could have happened to him. Let's see. Maybe, uh, maybe he yeah. got another phone call right after he got off the phone with us and he's having a chat. <laughs> oh Let's my see, maybe god! Maybe I should call him. What do you think? Let me call him up. See what happened to him. We'll get him on the phone. Yeah, maybe you'll you hear him. Yeah, you had to call them. And, I'm gonna uh, call him up. <laughs> Because, uh, you could call the them and ask what happened. Saying, hey, I know he's really... not hanging around on the phone because it would be on the board. I would see him. <laughs> so <laughs> this is funny. Well, the phone is ringing, folks. Let's see if he answers. Yeah, see if he answers, and uh, or like you said, he could be on another call. So that we don't could know. happen, you know. Yeah, you know yeah, how these movie stars know. are. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. 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 So, uh, hey, Anthony Chisholm, we're, we're, we're on the radio live waiting for you to call in. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Yeah, see, you already forgot. Okay, you're going to call that number I gave you? No. My mind went off everything because I'm surrounded by so many distractions. Okay. 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 Call the number right now. Okay. Okay, great. <laughs> you got to call it right now. Joanne will be picking it up. But, uh, you know, the audience is all the way. We've got 20,000 people saying, we want Chisholm. <laughs> we want Chisholm. <laughs> okay, he's going to call right now, folks. You heard him. You heard him, right? <laughs> See, I told you. He literally you forgot. Say? We were talking to him two minutes ago. <laughs> Are you kidding me? I You're See, I told me. you. That's how much. Anthony Chisholm could remember a whole lot. Wait, is he calling me back? I can't believe this. Look. <laughs> Chisholm, you call, you're calling my cell phone number. That's the wrong number, brother. Uh-oh. Wait, you hear this? Wait a minute. I better hang up. Anthony, can you hear me? Oh, my God. He called my cell phone. Oh, oh this boy, is a classic funny. show. This show is going to go down in history. <laughs> he just hung up. This show is oh, going down. He Lord. just realized that he was calling me. 
instead of, oh, of the Lord, show. Oh, my Lord, he's funny. <laughs> now, this is a man who memorizes tw- a whole Broadway play. He's on, he did a play today. <laughs> Right. And he remembers and, and, every line he's got to do perfectly. But yeah. if you talk to him a minute ago and tell him we're going on live, okay, I'll call you right back. And then he's gone. He forgot. Oh, he's, he's funny. Oh, I can't yeah. believe that. He's, but he's the best. He's one of the best he's human the best. beings on this planet. He's I love him. I loved, loved, loved him in Oz. Oh, my God. He was just perfect. Good character. Um I absolutely loved him in that. So yeah, he came in. We came in on Oz at the same time. He came in. Oh, I, did you I came really? In as one, yeah, yeah. It was the same exact season, season four, and he came uh-huh. in as Burr Redding. Here he is. Let's get him in here. Oh, he's here. Hello, Anthony. Are you here, brother? I'm here. I'm, I'm sorry. I can hear you. Can you hear me? Okay, we hear you loud and clear, Joanne. You could hear him, right? Uh, hi, Anthony. Yep, I can hear you loud and clear. Well, it sounds like I'm online. You are okay. live on the air. You're, you're <laughs> live on the air, brother. we got like twenty, thirty thousand 30,000 people tuned in right now worldwide. Italy, Hello, everybody. Japan. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Anthony uh, says, uh, now, now that we got him here, we said the time for action has arrived. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Anthony, man, you know what? Um, we were having a ball before you came online because we literally we said we just talked to Anthony like two minutes ago, and he's not calling. Something maybe he had to run to the bathroom, or maybe Mike Mike's mom cooked some good dinner there and just started eating or something. I said, "Hot dog!" Anthony already forgot. I said, "I said here's a man who can memorize a whole script and go on stage live, but we easily could forget what we talked about a minute ago." <laughs> well, that's Way it is. Yeah, uh, exactly. Well, universe, me and Joe Wayne, we were... things being done. There's all kinds of ways of doing it. <laughs> Joanne hey. even said that she runs to the top of the stairs, and when she gets up there, she forgot what she went up there for. I I do it yeah, all the time. I've, I've, I've done that. We've all done that. That's you know, right. Oh, uh, short-term well, memory sometimes. Short circuit. Well, well, one of the best uh, stories that Anthony said, I don't know if, we, if he wants to talk about it tonight, but uh, was you remember the story you told me, Anthony, about when uh, you got get, went into that house and you got out of the cab and then you forgot something and you ran back and you forgot where the apartment was? I don't know if you want to talk about that. Oh, that was, uh, that was, <laughs> that was back uh, when I was driving a cab in the 70s. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was a snowy night. Uh way past midnight, and a Latin club was letting out. There was a crowd of people in the street all waving for a cab. And I was driving a cab at that time. I drove for six years from 72 to 78. And um, I picked up this beautiful Spanish girl, Latina, and we took off to the South Bronx, to the Bronx, as she was in the cab with me. And um, while we were riding, she got very familiar. Well, when we got up to where she was going in the Bronx, uh, she said she didn't have the money on her and that I would have to come up with her uh, to the um, apartment. And I double parked my cab with blinkers on and went up with her. Well, we went up to the uh, apartment, and uh, she told me, fix myself a drink, that she would be right back. Because she had a big bar with all kinds of liquor. I fixed a drink, and I was browsing around, uh, waiting for her to come out the uh, the room. And she called for me. I said, hey. I said, hey. <laughs> and so I, I, I wandered over to the bedroom door, and there she was laying on the bed, rather unclothed. Well, she was naked, except for oh. uh, uh, her panties. And uh-huh. she was rubbing. She had a bed full of money. Oh, that must have been, looked like $100,000 to me, uh, full of money. Uh-huh. And she was rubbing it on her body, asking me to stay with her. Stay with wow. me. Stay with me, she said. 
And, uh, and I said uh, inadvertently, uh, my cab, because I had double parked here with the blinkers on. And she says, oh, it is not a uh, cab. She handed me a $50 bill and said, uh, here's a cab, sir. So I took her 50 but then I thought, I got to go move my cab. I can't leave it double parked out there. I said, I'll be right back. Well, I ran out of the apartment, hopped on the elevator, ran down to the street, and moved the cab. As I was parking in a space about a half a block up the street, I suddenly realized I had marked in my mind where I came from, <laughs> the building or the apartment. I had just, you know, my mind was racing and I didn't, and I didn't remember. So I parked the cab and I ran down to the building I thought it was, and I couldn't even get back in. And I'm calling her name, and it started snowing. Real, it was already snowing, but it started snowing heavier, with these big, uh, big uh, flakes. And um, and I'm calling her name, and she's not answering. I'm calling her name. She's not answering. So I started ringing on doorbells, getting cussed out from one doorbell to another. And then I went and got the cab and pulled it out in front of the building I thought it was with the blinkers on. And I started calling her name again. No answer. <laughs> and that was the end of the story. <laughs> I never reconnected with that woman. I did get wow. that $50 bill. Uh, uh, that she handed me initially, but I never reconnected with her. Wow. <laughs> yeah, that, that, I never forgot that story when you told me that. And that's one of the most classic stories. I mean, here you are. You drove her all the way to the Bronx. I mean, this could be a, this could be a movie, man, a comedy. You drive her yeah. all the way to the Bronx. You go upstairs with her. She's laying in the bed in the panties with money all over her. She wants yeah, you to come I back like and somebody. stay with her for the night. You go park your cab. You forgot what apartment it was, what house it was. So <laughs> you didn't get her. You didn't get the money. And you didn't get oh, the, the, the cab fare. I ran off with the $50 bill she had to me. Oh, good thing for that. At least, at least you got paid for the cab fare. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But but the temptation that was to follow, tons of it, I never reconnected with. <laughs> That's a bold thing. But, I, yes, I am yes. sure right now all these all the people that listen are in stitches laughing with that story, but that's a classic, yeah. man. I mean, yeah. you know, that just got, that's uh, just I, a I classic. I can tell you a lot of cab stories that I drove for now, six now, years. Now, you were driving the cab, Anthony. What, what year was that? 1972 to 1978. And you were already acting because you've been acting since, well, like, 1968. I was acting since 68. Right, 68, you did the movie I was movie raising a family, time. going to NYU, and uh, driving a cab, and doing plays as well. Right. So, uh, there was a lot of people driving, Robert De Niro, uh, Al Pacino, Peter Boyle. He drove for 11 years. Hey, uh, Joe Spinell. Know, and, uh, also, jo- but, um, Joe Spinell we, did the same thing. Yeah, it was a great uh, hustle for cab drivers. Well, I mean, it's an actors, actors thing. For actors, for actors, it was a great hustle. Yeah, no, well, that's that all actors. I mean, either was either driving a cab, uh, or bartending, or you know, you couldn't have a job that was going to get in the way of, of, be, of being able to go on, a, exactly, on an audition. Exactly, and you, you couldn't know. get your head filled up with a lot of facts and figures from some job. Uh, if you were working on Wall Street, you have to wear about three different suits a week, start shirts. Yeah. And everything, and they're filling your head up with information that you don't even care about. And you go on to lunch spending thirty, forty dollars for people you don't even care about or, or the information. And then exactly. if you pay your boss to let you off for a couple of hours to go to a film, well, oh, but let this be the last time we have to go through this. You didn't have to deal with any of that. You can hop in the cab with your sweats on and make a couple hundred dollars. Uh, you're going to hop in broke and come back with a couple of dollars in your pocket. And you had your mind free to to, to, to drift into imagination and, and other things you had on your mind. 
Right, right. You're hundred percent right because you can't, you can't, you know, those kind of jobs blow your mind as it is, and then try to remember oh, yeah. lines or scripts. You know, you, you can't, can't even think it. about your dreams you're, because you're thinking about all this crap they're, they're loading your head up with. And most people, ninety percent of the people, don't follow their dreams because they end up in that kind of situation. You know, I right? Mean, and then you get into you know? a rhythm of getting a paycheck every week, and that rhythm can take you out of the orbit. Of being an actor because you're getting that That's money right. every week, every week, every week, every week. You're getting the money, so that has a, a play on your subconscious oh, as well. Okay. So exactly. the last job I ever worked was in 1981. I managed uh, twin movie theaters on 59th Street, around the corner from Bloomingdale's, between second and third. I did it for ten and, months, and I hated and you it. Did, and- in 1981, you did that movie called Death of a, a Prop. What was it called? You were with Death yeah, yeah, Death of a Prop with Morgan Freeman. And Morgan Freeman, that's right. He played Malcolm X, the last day of his life, 1981. was a story of Malcolm, the last day of his life. And it tracked him from his uh, house, saying goodbye to his family, to the Audubon Ballroom, where he was assassinated. And in, in between, it, it cut into the guys that assassinated him. You know, I played a yeah. cop in it. You know, I had yeah, a few lines that. in the precinct uh, after he had been killed. But yeah. um, 1981. Yeah, I want to tell him more than didn't even listen. change his hair. Huh? Yeah, I, I, he still looked exactly the same. He still looked the same as he did then and now. But I want to tell him more than a big that's... Jerry Curl hairdo, <laughs> and he didn't change it for the part. He didn't get a, a Malcolm X haircut. Or uh-huh. any of that, he played, and and I thought it was an anachronism of Malcolm when he used to be Malcolm Little. You know, it just was a flashback, and he became that. He became right. that in the in the movie. Right, right. I've anyway, seen the movie. Yeah. Okay. I got a copy of it at home. What he came well, I want to what I want to tell the audience. I, I'm not. Uh, uh, don't mean to interrupt you. I want to tell the audience that's listening, and also Joanne, that uh, Anthony Chisholm was in classic movies like Cotton Comes to Harlem. I'm sure you've heard of that, right, right. Joanne? That's right. Uh, and yeah. also, also, yeah, Cotton Comes to Harlem. Did you ever see that, Joanne? I've seen that. Yes, I have. I'm very yeah, familiar Colin, with Colin Colin Anthony Lockhart. Chisholm's work. He is a Colin phenomenal actor. The villain, uh, Reverend Zico Malley. He's a handsome guy, uh-huh. yeah, arguably the most handsome person ever did a movie, uh, more than uh, Rudolph Valentino or, or any of the other handsome actors that have been in movies throughout the, mm-hmm. uh, the 20th century. Calvin Locker was a very handsome man, and he yeah. came from England. He was a West Indian who grew up in England, and he came to America with a film called Joanna uh, with the... Uh, Singer, I forgot her name, Little Lulu, or something. Uh-huh. And, uh huh. And and um, and um, he got a lot of press, and he came into New York in the late '60s, introduced, uh, and he started getting movie roles. And he was very handsome. Uh, in Joanna, he got out of a Rolls Royce with a white suit and white Afghan dogs, mm-hmm. and um, and uh, you know. But anyway, in The Cotton Comes to Harlem, which was his first movie, he played the villain with our, um, Raymond St. Jacques, Godfrey, Godfrey Cambridge, and mm-hmm. a host of other actors. And uh, he was preaching to the people on the platform, trying to raise money to go back to Africa for everybody. And, and he was raising money, but he was really... He was really, uh, he was really uh, um, scheming to have the the the, the, the uh, fundraiser robbed, which he was already in on. And uh, and so I came up to the platform out of nowhere. A DA's man flashed a badge and said, Oh, man, oh, man, And he said, Yeah, what is it? He said, the DA wants to see you downtown. And he says, well, I'm busy. And I said, right now. But actually, I was just an imposter. 
uh, to squirrel him away from uh, the scene before the robbers came to rob all the money and who he was in cahoots with. And he says, well, I'm busy. I said, now, right now. And just then a woman in the crowd reached back with her purse and says, you black Judas, you. And Calvin stops her. He says, now, 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 now. He says, I'm going down to this white man's office and so on and so forth. And you keep it black till I get back. And then he turns <laughs> to go down off the platform with me. He says, all right, let's go. And we're going down the platform when the robbers pull up in a van and the back doors open up and four or five robbers in jumpsuits and hoods and goggles, orange, leap out with shoot machine guns and they start shooting up the place. I'm the first one to get shot. I get <laughs> shot all up and I fall in Calvin's arms and he hides behind my body as the bullets fly oh. Uh, around him, and then he squirrels away, uh, and the story continues. But that was uh, that was me in Cotton Gums Harlem. Yeah, that was and in 1970. That and was another 11. When it came out, we shot it in '69. It came out in 1970 in all the theaters around America. Red yeah. Fox was in that, and he sure. they built that 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 the series off of the character he played in it. Uh, That's right. He played the, the same type of character in that movie. Right. Hmm? Yeah. And also, uh, Joe, I know uh, for other people that might not know this, uh, the same two famous actors who were co- in Cotton Comes to Harlem, they and that also that good-looking actor that he was just talking about, they got teamed up. All of them got together again. Anthony Chisholm was also in uh, uh, Come Back, Charleston Blue, one of my favorite movies from the 70s. Right, right. Ah. I did that one. Come Back, yeah, Charleston Blue, that. That and Anthony. Sequel. Yeah, and, that's uh, like a sequel. But Anthony, also you, you got to tell Joanne and the audience. And Shots <laughs> and Godfrey Cambridge, both who have uh, gone on uh, to the great stars beyond now. We don't know where they are, but they they, they died. Uh, yeah. But, uh, you know, I've worked movies along the years and theater intertwined, and um, yeah. it's, been a, it's been a fond journey. Uh, now, one of the Anthony, words that, that been on the 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 woman in the comeback Charleston Blue, that the grandmother, the tough one at the end, uh, which is throughout the whole movie. The great Tell Jenny everybody Jenny. whose grandmother that is. Karen Howard. That's it. Who's who's busy working now? But we're all Karen's from Cleveland, Ohio, and Terrence was a baby. Or he wasn't wow. even born, actually. Huh? Yeah, Joanne's yeah. impressed with that one. Yeah, well, yeah, I didn't Karen, know Karen, uh, that was a Karen Howard's uh, grandmother. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the great mm-hmm. Minnie Gentry was a famous actress uh, uh, during the um, 60s, 70s, and 80s. She died uh, in 95, 78 years old. She'd never been in a mm. hospital in her life, but she died. Wow. Yeah, she got uh, afflicted with um, lung cancer. Out of the blue, oh. and uh, it's five months later she was gone. She had wow. four generations of cho- of girls around her: her daughter, mm-hmm. her granddaughter, her great granddaughter, and her great great granddaughter, all around the bed. Uh, wow! She was in great pain, and she died in Manhattan Plaza. Mm. Um, but um, we don't know what in the mosaic of, of living in life. God has in store for us. We don't you know. We just keep moving yeah. through until it's, it's until it's finished. We might be live to be 110, or we might get out of here at the age of 10, or anything That's in right. between. So, but, but Anthony, we, can I? I want to ask a question, Sal. Is that okay? You can yeah. do anything, Joanne. You're you're, you're yeah. my partner, man. All right, go here ahead. we go. Uh, Anthony, I, I want to ask you how you got started as an actor. I mean, what made you become an actor? Well, my mom taught me. My mom was an unpublished novelist when mm-hmm. I was two, three, four years old. And she wrote a lot of poems. She taught me the appreciation of the spoken word, uh. of doing a poetry. 
she taught me mm-hmm. Langston Hughes, Rudyard Kipling, uh, Henry Wadsworth Longfellow, Alfred Noyes, um, uh, Edgar Allan Poe. She taught me all these yeah. long, sophisticated poems when I was three, four years old, and I wow. used to do them in front of the. Fa- I used to do them in front of the family and neighbors, and I mm-hmm. heard them say, "Whoa." And somehow that stuck in my subconscious that I had affected people with words that came out of my mouth. And I would say, whoa, after they say, whoa. And they say, whoa, I say, whoa. I say, whoa, I say, whoa. <laughs> so I, um, I, 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 that stayed with me because I'm here to tell you that things yeah. we learn and do at age two, three, four years old, Mm-hmm. are some of the most indelible things that we can do in our life. They stick with us. They stay deeply embedded in our subconscious. Mm-hmm. So I didn't do my first play until I got out of the United States Army. I'm a combat oh, Vietnam really? veteran. And um, I won a talent contest for dramatic readings while I was in the uh-huh. Army. Although mm-hmm. I played a trumpet, a uh, flew a horn, um, I was in a virtuoso on an instrument. I played in a band and orchestra from age 12 to, to 19. Oh, okay. But uh, I knew there were virtuosos that played the violin and the piano like geniuses, and I didn't want to go up against them. But then I saw a category called dramatic reading. I said, what is that about? They saw that's poetry. I said, huh? Mm-hmm. Poetry. Your <laughs> poetry. Yeah. So, so um, I said, I'll enter that. And I won the trophy. I won the contest. I did this poem. It was very long mm-hmm. in two parts. And, um, and I won. Wow. And um, I also won the Yale University, uh, the, the uh, School of Drama. Right. But I was early in the Army at that point when all that happened. I went through, I became a drill sergeant, I went to officer school, and then I went to Vietnam, and I went through some horrific battles. So mm-hmm. by the time I got out of the Army, my mind was in a different place in space. Yeah. Because I, I had went in the Army, an architect, student, in a school of engineering, and, oh. I, was, and I was making money in Washington, as a waiter in a very exclusive nightclub. I had worked in two before that, but I wound uh-huh. up settled in this nightclub. Oh, I was making over $1,000 a week back then, and I was waiting wow. on the King of Jordan, King of Jordan regularly, and the ambassador to Kuwait. Wow. Regularly. And uh, wow. these old waiters taught me how to bone car, flambe, French serve, quality of wines, and I got good at it. Well, I did that for a year and a half in Washington when mm-hmm. my parents called me and told me a letter had arrived. And I said, well, open it. And they read it to me, and then they sent it to me. It said, greetings. You have now been inducted into the United States Army. Ooh. Oh, oh God. I lost my oh. student department, and I wound up in the Army for two years. Wow. And, uh, I don't want to go through the whole Army story, but uh, it was uh, an experience. Yeah. Uh, and after yeah. I got out of the Army, I started acting. And I've been acting oh. ever since. Wonderful. Yeah, ever for, since. Those pe- for those people who are listening, now, Joanne, uh, I, I already told you, but there's people out there, a lot, thousands of people out there listening. And if you hear, if you notice how Anthony Chisholm is talking, in the background you hear some people talking. I just want to let you know. That Mike, uh, that uh, Anthony Chisholm right now is hanging out at Michael Wright's house, and Michael Wright's mom. That's who he hears talking in the background. Michael Wright is also an incredible actor. All right, uh, Michael Wright is yes. from uh, from uh, Oz as well. Oh, he played he, Omar White. He's done a lot of movies. He's done a lot of movies. He really yeah, he Sugar, was on the Sugar Hill. Movie when he was in his early twenties, and uh, yeah. he did the Five Heartbeats, which is a classic movie. Uh, yeah, he was, he's right uh, on the he's uh, right on the cover of the DVD, Michael Wright on the Five Heartbeats. <laughs> he was the tragic lead 
of the story of five singers, uh, four or five singers that uh, that uh, were like the temptations of their time, and it's a whole story of of these uh, singers and their relationships. And uh, Michael was the one they kicked out of the group because of substance abuse. And then they track his story and then coming back with it. Uh, there's yeah, a lot Michael, going on in that story. But, uh, yeah, he's in a lot of stuff. Yeah. yeah. You can reach it on, on um, Amazon or, or, or it's called The Five Heartbeats. But later on, years, go, years later, after he had done a dozen or two of movies, we wind up on the same TV series together called Oz. Oh, they well, I never heard of that show. What's that? Oz, did you say? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a show that I met you on, and, and we had a wonderful time. I was on it for three years every week. And uh, yeah. Michael was on it the same length of time, playing it in me. And uh, we had a wonderful time. Uh, that show could have ran for 20 years. Uh, it could have, and, and I was so saying to Sal, why the heck did it end? I was so much into that show, and then poof, it was gone. I was oh, standing God. next to the creator when he says, well, I'm shutting it down. And yeah. I said, what? I said, you got over a billion fans because the show was broadcast all over the world on satellite television. He yeah. said, well, if at least each of us send me two bucks a piece. I might think about shooting it on. That's what he said. Now, he's got wow. new shows out now, the Borges and Copper and um, and whatnot, so he's still doing his thing. The reason he shut all us down, about five or six of his primary actors had gotten conflicting jobs that were oh. uh, conflicting with the schedule of Oz. Uh, Harold Perrineau, who was in a wheelchair, who was a narrator of the show, Right. Matrix one, and, Matrix two and three, yeah. over in Australia, mm-hmm. for for eleven or fourteen months. Uh, mm-hmm. Alan Walker, who played the Muslim, a leader, mm-hmm. he got Tears of the Sun with Bruce Willis for seven months in Honolulu. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Shilling, that. Schillinger, 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 the uh, Nazi skinhead, got yeah. uh, Law and Order and Spider Man. Yep. All at the same time. And, and, and so, what about um, the only one who was staying close to home was Chris Maloney because he was doing stuff like Law and Order, and he would we'd be there, and we'd have to wait for him to show up so we could do the scenes. And uh, well, he would be doing Maloney, Law and Order, and then she'd come. yeah, he was yeah, he'd, a, he'd be doing he his was scenes doing and Law and Order as the year before he started Oz. Exactly, and, and while I remember many days we had to wait for him to show up because uh, we had to do scenes with him and he was over there doing uh, Law and Order and yeah. we'd be hanging around waiting, remember? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I had an opportunity to work on one episode of SVU. But, um, yeah, so Christmas, Rita Marino got a new series. Uh, and so it, it rattled, it rattled Tom Fontana and his, mm-hmm. and his uh, rhythms and flow with Oz. And, uh, and, you know, he's writing only a week ahead of schedule. And he made a decision. And he had a deal with HBO that he could shut it down whatever he wanted to. He wasn't under HBO's control on that oh. issue. Mm-hmm. So, okay. Um, yeah, me, me and Anthony, uh, uh, Joanne, me and Anthony started at the same time. You came, We both came in on season four, right, Anthony? Yeah, I thought you were there from season one. But you came in the same, roughly the same season I did. Yeah, we came in at the same time. I remember like it was yesterday. I remember seeing you for the first time and and uh, did that scene where around, we were around the table with the Italians and the, and the, uh, the what do they call them? What were they, uh, the, what were they called? The, uh, the black gang was called what again? The Homeboys. The what? The Homeboys. The, the Homeboys. And we did and that they scene. Right? all the drugs in the prison. Yeah, right. And yeah, if you were first an Irish, day. Italian, Latino, gays, Christian coalition, the bikers, the skinheads, everybody, if they wanted drugs, had to come to me to get them. That's right. <laughs> so 
you know, I had fun doing that. The bird, and, uh, bird. The time for action has arrived. Yeah, I want you yeah. to get Omar White in the hospital warden, and we're gonna yeah. kill them. Sicil- we're gonna kill those Sicilians. <laughs> the show's been around for twenty years. The show's been around yeah. for twenty years, but um, well, I, we as actors, we got to keep moving on with our lives and um, right. the ebb and flow of whatever we run into. Yo, I'm doing me, a play Joe, right do now. you like uh, mm-hmm. movies or a film or theater more? Which well, do you any like? a decent actor likes the theater, number one. Mm-hmm. Because you're doing it live in front of us. Uh, it doesn't matter if it's 100 or 1,000 people or more. And you get that instant feedback. Plus, you've got to stay real and on the track of the story for the whole two or three hours. That's it's right. not like sitting in a trailer and waiting to do 10 minutes or, or two minutes of a scene. you got to be real and ride through the whole story from start to finish. Yeah. You have to be in the uh, moment thing. every 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 time, also, right, Anthony? No because I had I was, uh, when you go in front of the people, you got to stay in front of the people until the story's over. Right. And and um, that that feeling where you you design your emotional roadmap for the story, you learn your lines, and then you take off into the story. You're riding through that story for two to three hours, nonstop. Yep. Oh, do you know how gratifying that is mm. in front of a thousand people? You don't yeah. get that kind of you don't get that kind of um, satisfaction doing a movie or TV because you're sitting in your right. trailer waiting to do five minutes. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? And they may cut and and, and do it again ten times. There's you know, no Joanne, comparison. There's no there is no comparison. And I tell you, that, and also because I, I tell you, when we were working on the set of Oz, me and Anthony, and whenever Anthony Chisholm did his scenes, I would watch, and uh-huh. it didn't even seem like it was acting. It, it felt like it was really happening. That's how amazing Anthony Chisholm is as an actor, and wow. that's how he is on on the plays on stage. So real. Mm-hmm. I mean, everybody on Oz were very good actors. Everybody's a great actor, but something about Anthony Chisholm. It, it, you ask any actor or not, some of the actors said, I think Anthony Chisholm is the best actor around. So, I mean, wow. even I remember Johnny Palumbo. You remember Johnny Palumbo, right, uh, uh, Anthony? Johnny? Johnny Palumbo, uh, the man, I think. Uh, yeah, yeah, he was yeah, one of the yeah. Italians. He said, I think uh, yeah, Anthony yeah, one of yeah. the best actors. You know? So, well, that's, that comes from the theater, too. You, 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 you have your own barometer inside your body. You could tell truth from fiction through that barometer mm-hmm. in your body. If you don't believe yeah. it, how do you expect anybody else to believe it? That's right. right. You've got to That's believe right. what you're saying. Right. And exactly right. That's you, what makes it real. Yeah. I, I just want to add something well, real quick. Joanne, we don't, do we have to do a commercial tonight? Because the show is going so fast, or could we just go do the no, show without no, any commercials? No, we well, We're good. Beautiful, beautiful. Because there's so much stuff that we haven't even got it's close to. We haven't gotten close to yeah. Anthony's plays, and this hour is flying by. And, uh, yeah. you know, he also, uh, Chisholm was also in the movie, um, what was it called, uh, with, with uh, oh, Whoopi Goldberg. Wait, don't tell me I sit in the top of my, uh, I, Beloved, was it? Beloved? Was that with yeah, the, she wasn't with in the, Beloved. She was in, Whoopi was in uh, Color Purple. Color Purple. No, uh, the, 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 the movie with, uh, I was what's in the o- Oprah. With Oprah. Oprah Winfrey. I was the best Beloved. That's beloved. That's what I was thinking. Whoopi was in that, Whoopi? though. Danny Glover was in it. Well, you did yeah, Danny Glover, not Whoopi. I was in it. Right. That's Anthony right. And, and, and Danny Glover have a nice scene in that movie. And, uh, and uh, oh, uh, you know, uh, Oprah Winfrey was the star of that one, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah right. Right. Danny Glover. Anthony, what did yeah, you think Dan, of that movie, Beloved? I mean, Danny it got Newman. a lot of hmm? controversy, but what did you think about it? I'm sorry, say again. No, I, I was wondering what you thought about the movie Beloved. Um, how did you feel about doing that movie? Because uh, it, it was said, let's see, the writer was, how oh, good is, I forget the name of the writer, uh, her name. Um, Tony Morrison. Tony Morrison uh, made a statement mm-hmm. that that wasn't exactly the way she portrayed the the book. 
And um, well, it's hard to, yeah. to, to recreate the way she portrayed that book because it was a very complicated book. She won the mm-hmm. Pulitzer Prize, and she also won the Nobel Peace Peace Prize for literature. Right. So she's a great writer. And yes. that was a complicated story, beloved. And for them to even try to make a movie out of it was, was an insurmountable task. But they made a yes. movie out of it. Hundred hundred million dollars spent on it. Yeah. And oh, um, yeah. and Oprah Oprah bought the rights. And yeah. she's the one that made it happen. Because she owned right. the, the, the the film. But it still took her uh, several years to get it mm-hmm. to the screen. Jonathan Demme, yeah. great uh, film director, uh, Silence of the Lambs, beloved. I mean, um, uh, Philadelphia. He's done some great mm-hmm. movies. Yeah. He wound up directing it. And um, I had a little role in it. Mm-hmm. I had summer scenes with Oprah meeting uh, her and and Danny. You know, it was about uh, the, the initial... Uh, Change before the winter game, and Danny got mm-hmm. hired to work in a pig slaughterhouse that I worked right. in. And um, the scene opens up with Danny falling down in the mud and getting up and falling down in the mud and getting up singing. Yeah. And I'm working in the, in the, with the other men and I tell him, you like this work so much, maybe you best get in to shoot with the others. You, know, you got much more <laughs> sense than they do. And he said, what are you talking about? He says, uh, uh, me and my woman got something special. And I said, oh, boy's fixing to found himself a gold mine. Everybody laughs. <laughs> and he says, better than gold. He says, me and my woman fixing to have a baby. And and when they said that, the camera cut to the old man in the movie who had, just, who had found Oprah. And he was there in the barn when Oprah killed her newborn in the barn because the and slave catchers were getting ready to uh, to take over everything. They had yeah, rode in yeah. on the plantation, and Oprah and her children ran into the barn. And she grabbed mm-hmm. the youngest, banging it against a pole, where the slave catcher yeah. came in. Ibby was already dead. But the yeah. old man took over the handling of the baby after it died. And mm-hmm. the, when she's, when Danny says, me and my woman fixing to have a baby, a camera cut to him with a stern look on his face because he remembers uh-huh. the whole experience. And he says, uh-huh. and my baby is going to be born free. And that's when I respond yeah. Nothing born free ever again. And he says, what are you talking about? He says, I've been bought and sold and sold and bought and bought and sold and sold and bought. And that ain't going to happen to me no more. It ain't going to happen to my children no more. Yeah. And I respond, children inherit where they came from. I said, just yeah. because you don't see no change don't mean they ain't there. And as long as the world is white, that's where they stay. And and, and then I broke up the uh, beat and said, come on now, let's go get something to eat. And I'm mm-hmm. going through the gate in the house or uh, out, this outdoor scene. I was going through the gate to get out where they were serving lunch. And, but it left Danny, the camera pulled in on him with a perplexed look on his face. Well, the next scene, Danny's under a tree eating his lunch when the old man comes to him and shows him the newspaper article of when Oprah killed her child. Yeah. So that that was a, the scene. Uh, That's but during that time I met Oprah, I had about five conversations with her. It lasted quite a bit of time, uh, 15, 20 minutes. And I saw her at the grand opening of the movie at the Zigfield uh-huh. Theater in New York. They had the grand uh-huh. premiere. And then they had red carpet stretched across the street from the Zigfeld to the Hilton Hotel. They had both sides of the traffic blocked off completely. And we 
all wandered over to the Hilton, up to the Grand Ballroom where everybody was there. Tom Cruise, Elizabeth Taylor, everybody was there. It was a uh-huh. big crowded, crowded, and I took my daughter with me, and I oh, introduced nice. her. To, uh, my daughter graduated from Syracuse Film School, and I introduced uh-huh. her to Demi, and uh, there was a lot of hobnobbing going on. When Oprah comes in, if a entourage around her, uh, lights over top of her head, cameras buzzing, and she moved to the center table where she was uh-huh. dining, and, and the whole table stood up, and she greeted everybody, and they all sat down. And then Oprah got besieged by waiters and captains taking her food orders. Oh. Well, my daughter and I stood away from all that for a while. Mm-hmm. And Oprah was finally eating and chit-chatting at the table when I moved in on her. Moved in on her like... Like... Uh, like um, Count Dracula on one of his I moved in on her. I put palm of my hand in the small of, in the small of her back. She looked over her shoulder and saw me, and she squeaked and stood up, dropped her napkin, and gave me a big bear hug. Oh, so I that's said, down, right. down, down, sit down, 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 sit down. And I sat her back down, and she introduced me to everybody at the table. I introduced her to my daughter, and then Aww. I kneeled beside her, and we held hands for over 15 minutes until That's our cool. hands got sweaty. Our hands got <laughs> sweaty. And then I got embarrassed because I was preventing her from eating, and I told her, go on and finish eating. And I gave right. her a kiss behind her ear, and, uh, and I backed away. Well, about Aww. 10, 15 minutes later, she stood up with her entourage and excused herself from the table. She was finished. And as she was moving through the crowd, going out, she saw me about um, 10 yards through the crowd away from her. And she stretched out her hand to me. And I clasped it. And we held hands for a minute or two. And they twist and turn. And turned and twist until <laughs> pop, pop, they broke up apart. And she went on down through the aisle and out the doors of the ballroom with her entourage. That's right. the last time I saw her. Now, Anthony, she, you, she funded yeah. the, that movie with a $100 million budget? Yeah. Yeah, now, did she, she didn't do it as well in the movie theaters because it was a complicated story. And um, she went on television for a whole month talking about women killing their children to keep them from going into slavery. Nobody wants to hear that. Nobody wants to right. see that. You know, not right. white or black. And I think right. that she shouldn't have did that. She should have attacked it from the supernatural perspective because the ghost was moving around in the, in the early part of the movie, the ghost of the yeah. child she killed. And yeah. Tandy Newton later, uh, when she became grown and, and met her on the on the road back home and took her home, and she became this yeah. freaked out child in, a, in an adult body. But they should have... It was a weird movie. It was, it was uh, the supernatural. It was, yeah, yeah. Hmm? I, it, uh, was know, it, came out, it came out a couple of weeks before Halloween. You know, they could have played on that supernatural aspect. The door is slamming, right. opening up and slamming. Danny freaking out when he went over her house and, and uh, stuff flying around the room and made it a ghost story. Yeah, yeah, it started off that way. When I, when I, I saw that movie when it first came out, and at, at that beginning scene, it was it was just as well as like a horror movie. It was, a, it was freaky. Well, they could have sucked yeah. in millions of dollars of the public's money by advertising it that way. Instead yeah. of mm-hmm. uh, mothers killing their children, uh, yeah. you know, keeping them from going to slavery. Nobody wants to hear that. No. And so in the marketing um, uh, scheme of bringing that movie forth to the public, it would have been better to advertise it as a horror story, a ghost story. Now, did she funded the whole movie, Anthony? She funded it? 
Well, I can't say that for sure because I'm you know I'm not privy to that information. But she's right, the right. one. Well, that, the only that, reason why I asked, I think right maybe the she, book. Yeah. Huh? The reason why I asked is I figure it was a hundred million dollars. She probably just like looked in the left pocket that was like change left from the. Well, she funded the whole thing, but I don't. I don't think she did that. <laughs> a she left had pocket, though. Well, she if she is like just as rich as Paul McCartney, I mean, man, oh man. <laughs> I don't I know if she wrote a check out of her house. It would be gossip. I have Every no idea. Every time I talked to her, she was... $25 million dollars and wrote a check. <laughs> I, I, Every you time I talked to her, she seemed as regular as you see her on television. Oh, yeah. She I'm was sure. a nice lady, and we had I'm like, sure. uh, a bunch of conversations. Yeah. Now, you know, Joanne, I don't know if you know this, and for people uh, uh, who are listening, after Oz wrapped, me, Anthony Chisholm, and Michael Wright all ended up doing a movie called Coalition, right? Jo- right, uh, director Joe Ariola. Yeah, yeah. And they wanted Tell me to do uh, Michael's role, but I was doing a play in L.A., and I couldn't come back to do it. And I suggested Michael. And then mm-hmm. they wanted me to come back and do another smaller role, that I couldn't even do that. And I suggested O.L. Duke. So yeah. they wound up Rest doing those peace. roles. And I came in for a minute and played a, a preacher at the funeral of um, one of the uh, Wu-Tang uh, clan crew uh, who had the lead in the movie. Mm-hmm. That but was that's uh, the way uh, Rick Rick you know, you can't, Yeah, you can't predict how things are going to happen when you you're in the mix of, of um, life and doing things in this business. Mm-hmm. But, um, you know, I've, I've worked a lot of jobs. You could start stories on each one of them. Um, one of my most now, memorable was when I worked with a bunch of Vietnam veterans who were professional actors. And we did a play called Tracers. Tracers was um, a very special piece. It was all Vietnam combat veterans, four Italians, one Irish, one Jewish, one Puerto Rican and myself. And we did it for seven months in New York City. And then we took it to London, to the Royal Court Theater. Joe Papp sent us over there. Then we went to L.A. four months. After we played in uh, London for four months. We did L.A. four months and then Philly, and then we went to Australia with it. And uh, it was a... Um, I still stay in touch with some of those guys. We were all eight of us combat Vietnam veterans. And um, the play was about Vietnam. Our opening night, Jackie O was there, Norman Mailer. Uh, 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 there were so many people there. Um, the director, Mike Nichols, um, Andy Warhol, Grace Jones. It was a packed lobby full of of high-profile people, when Joe Pep came running through the lobby, because the party was held in the lobby, and um, they held a chair that he stood up on and he started reading reviews, New York Times, New York Met. He just read about a half a dozen reviews, and each paragraph, a chair would go up in the lobby, a chair would go up in the lobby, a chair would go up. So we backed away. The actors got on the elevator and went down to the green room, and formed a circle that says, we, looks like we're in the middle of a hit. And we stayed here for seven months. And then we went around the world doing other venues. with. But I'll always remember that because it was something that's normally not done in, in theater. Yeah. Um, hey, Anthony, we, ha- we have uh, six minutes left to the show, so I want you to tell well, everybody well, about what you've been doing now with the play with uh, well, Lola one thing Velez I didn't in- insert. One thing I didn't insert was the years I spent with the great August Wilson, one of the greatest playwrights to ever walk the planet Earth, mass, uh, marked up here with Shakespeare and Chekhov. I did three of his plays on Broadway. I worked with him for a period of 15 years, and I did seven of his ten plays. And never forget August Wilson. They're doing his plays all over the country. I was a Paul Barrett um, when we buried him, and I knew him from 1990 to 2005 when he passed. And I'll never forget that. 
Uh, I could have talked for days on the plays, but you only got six minutes left. I'd rather talk about him than the six minutes we got left about the play I'm doing now. Okay, well, let's, uh, listen, the play to I'm doing let's now listen to that. Is, the play I'm doing now is written by a Puerto Rican lady who won the Pulitzer Prize last year for Water by the Spoonful. She's a very gifted writer. Um, her name is uh, Gara uh, Allegra Gudis. And she wrote a Broadway musical called In the Heights that had about a three-year oh, yeah. run on Broadway. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm just, I'm sorry, I don't mean to laugh, but that party going on in the background is killing me. Who's back there? Is that Michael Wright's mom oh, and his there's daughter? There's a lot of Who's people in one? this room. There's a lot of people in this room all <laughs> talking, but I'm, 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 you know, and and uh, uh, Michael is just zoned out. Uh, yeah, uh, what else is there? <laughs> What else is new, well, Anthony? Michael's on now. Okay, go ahead. But the play I'm doing now is called The Happiest Song the Plays Last. Three Puerto Ricans, two Middle Easterns, and myself. And it's a, it's a unique play. And uh, the lady uh, won those awards that I mentioned previously. And uh, we got one week left of a six-week run, and um, oh. it's on 43rd and, and 43rd and 8th Avenue, right off the corner going towards 9th, the Second Stage Theater. It's okay. called The Happiest Song Plays Laugh. It's got a laugh. It's got a Spanish guy with a guitar on the billboard. And, oh. um, and the, lovely Lauren, the, the lovely Lauren Velez is on the play with you. Lauren Velez, Tony Pena, who who recently played um, Ugly Betty's father on the series mm-hmm. Ugly Betty, and uh, the guy that that has uh, been in all three of the plays, uh, playing Elliot, the lead character, is in this. Joanne, play as well. you know uh, uh, Lauren Velez is uh, on Oz. She was the uh, doctor. You know, she was a cute doctor. Who, uh, oh, yeah, she did a she was series on, before that uh, called New York Undercover. Right, New York Undercover Dex- as well. Yeah, and she she's also on Dexter. Eight years in a row on Dexter. Right. Eight That's years right, in a right. row on Dexter. Uh-huh. You know, so we got to move forward with the history of she's been uh, almost 20 years on television. Spanish lady, wow. attractive, and uh, she's had three series in a row. Wow. For those people who don't know, uh, Joanne, oh, she also has a twin sister, man. Uh, I, I, I think she came on the set of Oz one time, and I thought it was Lauren Velez. I didn't know she had a You're twin kidding. sister. You're kidding. Wow, I didn't know that. Yeah, her name is Lorraine. She's, uh, she's uh, been building up her uh, credits. She was in uh, Rent. Uh, she took mm-hmm. over for uh, the Spanish girl that was on Rent. Uh-huh. And um, she's done other things, so she's on the move as well. Yeah, yeah. Two Latin, right. Uh, Latin actresses. But um, we're here for one more week. The happiest song plays last. Yeah, uh, man. Get and, uh, down to the second stage theater. Please come see it. Yeah, man. For those hundreds of thousands of people that are tuned in right now, and I don't know, you have enough room over there, Anthony? I mean, how, how many play, how many people does this place hold? There's only 300 seats. Oh man! Well, they're gonna have to. We're gonna have to do it on different shows because you know we got to, we got thousands of people over here, so they're gonna have to line up and you know. Yeah. <laughs> wait their turn. <laughs> I'm I'm a professional stage actor, movie actor, and television. But I oh, love yeah. it. Everybody knows that, Ooh. brother. Everybody knows Anthony Chisholm. We That's right. Got one more minute. One more minute left, and uh, this has been a great show, man. I mean, I, Chisholm, Anthony, you know, you're the only person in the. 16 shows that I've done since I started doing this that we had no commercial inter- no commercials interfere in your show. You took the well, whole I show on. You... No, 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 I'm glad. I'm glad yeah. because, I mean, you know, you were, there's so much for you to talk about and we didn't have, we wouldn't have enough, enough time, you know? So, yeah. well, this I, great. I've got a lot of stories to tell, probably uh, dozens of hours, but I'm, yeah, exactly. I'm happy we'll to do be another on show, show soon. Yeah, we'll mm-hmm. do another one. You know, we'll do another one uh, in the future. Definitely. And uh, 
All right, so we're gonna we're gonna sign out, man. This has uh, been the South Thirty Show with Joanne Baby and uh, the great uh-huh. actor Anthony God Chisholm. bless you. You so, too, uh, yeah, Anthony, yeah. and uh, I think you're the greatest actor alive, and I mean that from my heart. I absolutely love watching you, whether it's in the theater or on film. Yeah, well, uh, we all keep pushing through uh, the universe, uh, the, the galaxy, and the planet Earth, and we don't know what's coming up next. All right. Keep on okay. Hey, okay, God bless cheers, you, show, man. All right, I love you, brother. I'll talk to you later. Sounds, sounds, hold on, Michael Wright wants to say what, but... Oh, we have any more time, Joanne? Yeah, we do. Oh, we have a little time. Okay, hello. as long as we don't get cut hello. off. Hello, 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 hello. No hello, Michael Wright. Right. How are you? No guns, no knives. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Michael Wright sounds like the godfather. You hear him? His voice is he's like... <laughs> He just he just sings too much. When he was on Oz, he started singing, I want to be free. Don't worry about it. But now really? you, sound, you sound like Marlon Brando. Like, no, actually, it sounds yeah. more like Chisholm, the time for action. That's who I've been sounding ever since I've known you, Sal. I know. You've always had that raspy voice, man. That's why you sound like Pavarotti, brother. <laughs> and as we get older, it just keeps getting raspier. <laughs> How you well, doing, man? I'm just here. I'm just here. I'm looking at my mom here. She's here in my house here. So I'm just taking How, care of her. How's mom yeah. doing? Um, Mike Wright, say hello to Joanne, man. Hey, hello, Joanne, Michael. Man. I'm doing good. Good, good to hear that. Anyway, I'm here, and uh, uh, I have the pleasure of having Anthony Chisholm here in my home. Yeah. How's mom doing, Mike? How's mom doing? She's doing good, and I'm working on producing a new show called um, Stitch, yeah, about the uh, illegal organ trade. Yeah, look out for it. You know, when you show called... your hearts and your kidneys, Stitch. Oh. Like a Stitch. That's a new show he has? He's on? Yeah, that's what I'm working on. Yeah, that's what I'm working on producing, yeah. And I just <clears throat> recently did a trailer teaser for it, too. Brother Mike, I was looking at you last night, man. I was in Walmart last night, and I'm looking at the DVDs, and there you are right in front of my face. Uh, the, 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 uh, they, they put out the uh, five heartbeats again, but the, the new box is like the whole box is you're the, right on the cover. It's all you. You know, holding the microphone. You know, they they constantly so, change it around. I said, "Look at Brother Mike, and here you are talking to me right now." <laughs> yeah, man. I mean, Walmart. That's where I belong. Hey, <laughs> hey, don't knock yeah. it, man. It's a job, right? I might be working there myself soon. The way things are going. <laughs> anyway, no, I love yeah, Walmart, I'm man. I, I go to Walmart, buy my own movies in there. I had knock knock in there, man. <laughs> I hear you, buddy. Anyway, yeah, yeah. God bless you on the show. Yeah. Yeah, one night we'll have you on as a guest, brother. You'll do a whole show with me, right? I wish you all the success in the world. Hey, here's Anthony, okay? All right. We'll talk to Anthony. We've got a few more minutes there, Joanne. All right. God bless well, I, I didn't hear you. you. I didn't hear you. we got a few God more minutes. You you another minute. Your audience. Sure. Uh, all right. You know, you know, I'm going to give you back to Anthony. Okay, brother. Nice meeting you. Yeah, okay. I'll talk to you All right, man. All right, I love you, brother, man. We'll get together soon. I'm looking forward. Absolutely, man. All right? Okay, cheers, everybody. Say say goodbye to all your fans, Anthony. Uh, Time for action has arrived. (laughs) Yes, yes, indeed it has. It's time to move into the next moment (laughs) of our lives. Okay, thank you. Okay. Okay, I cheers all. Minutes. Have a great one. We'll, we'll talk to you next week. Next week we have another great guest for you. We won't tell Sounds you who it is. Good. All right. Okay, bye-bye. Okay. Thank you for listening. This has been a Mathis Media Hub production.